Wordsworth arrived here in December 1799. He walked down this hill towards Dove Cottage and resided there till 1808 after a period of upheaval in his life. Yeah, I think uh, it was almost a decade of upheaval that he experienced. Um, that actually begun uh, in 1790 when he travelled to uh, France to see the after effects of the revolution. Um, and whilst he was there, he saw lots of death and poverty and suffering, which came out in some of his later work. William Wordsworth first came here after finding Dove Cottage whilst on a walking tour with his friend Samuel Taylor Coleridge in 1799. At the time, William was looking for permanent residence for him and his sister Dorothy, and as the cottage was initially available to rent, him and his sister moved in later that same year. Three years later, in 1802, William Wordsworth married his fiancée Mary Hutchinson and she moved immediately to Dove Cottage with her sister Sarah. This was to become the first home the couple lived as a married couple and the first home in which William Wordsworth lived as a young father. Although the cottage was very crowded with family members, Wordsworth also had to accommodate the long visitations of romantic writers who later became known as the Lake Poets. The location of Dove Cottage within the inspiring natural landscape of the Lake District prompted Wordsworth, along with his contemporaries, to create some of the most recognisable work of the Romantic era. I think it's interesting to think about as well how important Dove Cottage actually is as a place, um, as well as who was living in it, because it was here that Wordsworth began drafting and writing what eventually became his, uh, his largest work, The Prelude, um, which was published after his death. In 1808, George and Sarah Green, the poorest couple in Gresnia, were at a sail over in Langdale, and on their way home crossing those mountains, they were lost in a snowstorm. Their bodies were found a few days later, but they left six children orphaned. As a result of this tragedy, a lot of men and women in the community got together and chipped into a collective fund so that kids could have something that resembled a decent education and something like their own family. Yeah, and within this, Dorothy Wordsworth was instrumental in making this a coherent community project and she played a large role actually in placing the children into loving homes. And it's this tragedy that actually pulls Wordsworth and Dorothy out of the first generation community of romantic writers in the house and back into the Grasmere community. This cottage itself really is so important to Wordsworth and his work because it created this, this situation where after the decade of turmoil in the 1790s he could really come back, settle down and reflect on his life up to that point and then put it back into a poem. The Dove Cottage years marked the beginning of Wordsworth's most productive period of creativity and he remained directly concerned with many of the political issues covered in poems such as The Baker's Cart. However, there does seem to be a distinctive shift in his focus. One of his best known poems, Daffodils, which he composed during his time at Dove Cottage, clearly marks more of a retreat into nature than his earlier, more political works. The Dove Cottage years allowed him to focus and reflect on his past experiences in France and the political and social issues that he was concerned with previously, and it gave him the opportunity to position himself in relation to the turbulent political culture of the time. And it's worse with disillusionment with the idea that you can bring around mass social change on a large scale that leads him to retreat into his own writing, a focus on smaller, low-class communities and the psychological suffering of the individual, just as you see with the poverty-stricken children in the baker's cart. I have seen the baker's horse as he had been accustomed at your door, Stop with the loaded wain, when o'er his head smack went the whip, and you were left, as if you were not born to live, or there had been no bread in all the land. Five little ones, they at the rumbling of the distant wheels, had all come forth, and ere the grove of birch concealed the wain, into their wretched hut they all returned. <laughs> 